Well, look at this. This is only my second time up on Big Kennesaw Mountain. I'm Gary Edelman, American Battlefield Trust. We got Chris White behind the camera. We got a small group with us today, mainly to come up here and show you this unbelievable view. The American Battlefield Trust leaves nothing to chance. And we knew when we come, came up here uh, two months ago and we planned it to come up here today, that it would be a nice clear day where you could see all the way to the city of Atlanta, just to the left of the trees. And of course, to Buckhead springing up over there, you might even get a view of the legendary Stone Mountain mountain off in the distance over there with just such the huge bas relief of uh, Confederate generals. You might be able to catch that from here as well. This is one of the reasons the Confederates are, of course, going to occupy this place. What a defensive position. Look off in this direction, the general direction in which uh, uh, the Union forces are going to be coming. This is the very ground that Sherman is operating on to try to get here. And every hill you see in the distance, every ridge line is going to be a potential defensive line for Joseph E. Johnston. The Confederates aren't going to stop there. They're going to get some cannons up here. Um, you know, we're talking about field pieces, not 100 pounders, and they were probably happy for that fact. And those emplacements are still up here. Beside that, I'm just going to um, invite Ranger Kyle Carlson up here to see what else he has to add as we're atop Big Kennesaw. Kyle? Yeah, if you want to swing it back over here to our original view. So, as you can see, there's no other incline, no large mountain, or anything else behind us. That's part of the reason why this was chosen as Johnson's essentially last stand besides just the Chattahoochee River. Um, a lot of people, the number one question I get when people ask about the battle here is why attack here? Why does Sherman do this? Well, good news for them, Sherman doesn't attack the mountain. He'll provide a demonstration on June 27th, but that's really about it. He has no goal of taking this 700 foot incline. Um, but he needs to clear the Confederates off of this mountain. Um, the railroad, the Western Atlantic Railroad, is what Sherman follows the entire Atlanta campaign here. That's how he gets his supplies. If the Confederates have this mountain, they own that railroad. Um, basically, he's got to kick them off. Otherwise, he's got no way to provide his army any food, and this campaign just stalls. Um, but really, like I said, not too much is going to happen here because of that mountain, uh, because of this mountain that we're standing on right now. Gary, if you want to finish up for me. Yeah, good, but we're not done yet because Chris Mikowski's on the scene, emerging Civil War, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, trying to see Stonewall Jackson from here being larger than life that he is. He's clearly visible. Um, so as we've been talking a lot over the course of the videos here, that Western and Atlantic Railroad that Kyle mentioned a second ago has been the lifeline of both of these armies as they have extended up and down. And Gary showed you the view that Sherman is following as he comes down here. The railroad comes close to the edge of the mountain off to my right. And so when the Confederates put artillery emplacements up here, they're e able to easily dominate that railroad. And so Sherman could easily outflank this mountain as he has done before, except that he would then have a large Confederate force in his rear, which he can't have because they can then cut his supply line. Remember, as he gets farther away from Tennessee, he's more and more dependent on that rail line. And so he's really got to protect it and be conscious of it. Um, so that's why this becomes sort of a do or die moment for Sherman. And he's going to make some choices here at Kennesaw, as we'll talk about over the next couple days, um, that he wouldn't make earlier in this campaign. He's constantly maneuvering, maneuvering, maneuvering here. He absolutely has to fight, uh, but he's still going to try to poke and prod. And we're going to talk about that over the next couple days. Um, but that's why Kennesaw becomes sort of like the last ditch stance. Uh, Johnson's been backing up, backing up. He's got a river behind him now. Um, he's going to end up coming up with a river defense. Um, and Sherman is going to go back to his old playbook at that point. But at the moment, Kennesaw looms large in this story because it is the immovable spot that Sherman has to deal with. Great, great points, guys. And, and I'll just end with this one, that, you know, here we are at yet another Atlanta campaign site that is pretty well preserved, not entirely preserved, but I think you agree from here and what we're going to show you later, that there are some really meaningful ways to interpret this aspect of American history. And if you can learn a little bit about American history, a little bit more about the Civil War, a little bit more about the Atlanta campaign, we think we're all going to be better off as citizens, making sure how this country is created and defined. Excuse the soapbox. So thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris, behind the camera. Thank you all for watching. We got much more ahead, so make sure you stick with us. Share this with your friends. Go to battlefields.org, and if you want some of the stuff we're wearing, go to battlefields.org slash shop, where if you order enough in advance, you might be able to have one of these preserved hoodies. Thank you so much.